Okay, welcome to uh, another vlog from my channel. I'm Professor Khaled Khan. I work at the University of Granada. And uh, today we will talk about study designs, the case control design, comparing it to uh, the cohort design. Typically, the word control is the one that causes confusion. So in today's vlog, we are going to cover what is the confusion. Then what methodologically is the distinction between the two designs. And finally, we'll give some tips on how to avoid the confusion over the correct terminology. The material we are going to present comes from these books that I have uh, authored. And uh, with some good luck today, my co-author, Professor Javier Zamora, is uh, also with me. So I'm going to request him to make a little introduction of himself. Hi, this is Javier Zamora. I'm Professor of Biostatistics. I'm the head of the Department of Clinical Biostatistics Unit at the Hospital Ramón y Cajal in Madrid. And I'm also Vice Deputy of the Cochrane Center in Madrid. Okay, okay, thank, thank you, you very much, Javier. Uh, we now move on to look at what is hierarchy of evidence. So evidence-based medicine likes randomized trials a lot. Uh, after randomized trials, it has controlled observational studies, cohort studies, and case control studies are the two designs that fall within this category. And then there are uncontrolled uh, and laboratory studies, which fall much lower down in the ranking. And then we look at the levels of evidence as, as presented by the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine at uh, Oxford University. Cohort study has a level called 2B, and case control study is 3B. When writing papers, Authors are expected to provide the design in the title and abstract. The idea is that immediately the reader should know as to what is the level of evidence of the publication. So the CONSORT checklist requires that randomized trial is mentioned in the title and systematic reviews require that meta-analysis, if used, is mentioned in the title and abstract. And for observational studies, uh, the study design, either cohort or case control, should also be mentioned in the title and abstract. So, if we have a study sample, um, recruited, and then we measure whether they are exposed or not exposed to a particular risk factor, for example, and then we follow them up to see whether they suffer the outcome or not. And with this information, we calculated the effect. Then this is, in simple terms, follow-up of a cohort of people in time from measurement of their exposure to words or time when they will be expected to experience an outcome or avoid it. And this is a cohort study. And in comparison, when the starting point is the outcome, we have cases with the outcome and controls without the outcome, and we go back in their history, back in time, to examine whether they were exposed or not. And then with this information, we calculate the effect. Then this is the case control design. So now I'm going to ask uh, Professor uh, Zamora, my friend Javier, to explain why cohort design is ranked higher in the evidence-based medicine hierarchy as we saw it in the ranking provided uh, in the previous slide. Yeah, uh, this is very interesting. This, the ranking depends mainly on how certain we are about an association, if it is real or not. I mean, the association between exposure and the outcome, we are 
uh, trying to identify if this association is real or not with these two designs. With the cohort studies, we have a couple of elements that make this design powerful. The first one is the, that when we select a sample, we are sure that the participants do not have the outcome, they are free of the outcome. Uh, in the case of case control studies, when we select the participants, as Khalid said, according to the outcome, we are not sure when we assess the exposure if the outcome were present when the exposure was assessed. So we can't ensure that the exposure is before the outcome. That is very important to assess causality. Uh, and the, other, the second element is that with cohorts, we are we are able to control more, more factors, more exposure that could confuse us when assessing the, the association. We are more able to select the participants and check other exposure with them. Uh, in, in the case of case controls, we are not allowed to do that. So it's an element, a powerful element to assess this association. Why is this ranking higher? All right, so because of this, uh, uh, the, the important difference between the two designs, it's very important uh, that readers should not be misguided when they read a paper. Well, unfortunately, life for readers is made difficult because as highlighted here, in a set of journals across various specialties, on average, 30% 34% of the time, when a study says that it's a case control study, it is not. And uh, well, you might say lower ranking journals with lower impact factors might make such an error, but look at this journal with an impact factor of 12. Even this journal has around a 44% mislabeling or error rate in the description of the design. In another specialty, we find the same old story, around a third of the articles are mislabeled. So, I think uh, Professor uh, Zamora will agree, the burden is passed on to you, the reader, uh, that you double check for yourself that the study is correctly labeled, so that you can then identify the ranking correctly. Can I say something? Please, Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. This is also a message, a very important message about don't being confused about the titles and the labels. It's important that independently of the title of the article, go to the methods and then try to identify how participants were selected and how the study was designed. Okay? And then we will create our own label of this study. Well, yes. Thank you. Yeah. With this in mind, and we want to bring this uh, video to an end, uh, with our uh, summary about how to avoid the case control confusion. You can see that the main problem arises because the word control exists in a cohort study describing exposure. And the word control also exists in the description of the outcome in a case control study. So just because the word control exists in the description of the title abstract uh, or methods, that does not make the study a case control study. Making this distinction as to does this word control as published refer to exposure or does this word control as published refer to outcome is what will help you clarify for yourself and avoid confusion over the description or labeling of the case control design. So with this, uh, I'd like to bring this uh, video to an end. Uh, I'll ask Professor Javier to make any closing remarks. And I'll encourage you to give your own comments and possibly helpful tips uh, as to how we could help avoid the confusion ourselves. And uh, we'll bring more on this issue in the upcoming videos. Maybe we would have in the future opportunity to avoid another confusion that is with the temporality of the study. 
you know, that will, will distinguish between all that concept that could be confusing also. Yeah, prospective or retrospective or the longitudinal nature of the study. Mm -hmm. This is also often very confusingly worded in the literature, so we'll cover that next time. Mm -hmm. So with this, we would like to say thank you for listening and uh, we'll welcome you uh, to make comments and we'll see you in the upcoming videos. Thank you.